So it's finally here, the big premiere of FX's long-awaited new adaptation of Shogun. And this was based on James Clavell's 1975 novel of the same name. And the first time that we got an adaptation of the novel was back in 1980. And it starred Richard Chamberlain and the legendary Toshiro Mifune. And that show was really a big deal back then, there was nothing else like it. And I believe that really was the first time there was an epic, high-quality television series. And it really paved the way to what we're used to now. But this new series really took a long time to come out. It was announced and delayed, announced a few more times and delayed. And I really wasn't sure if it would ever release. But after that first trailer that we got a few months ago, I was pretty confident it was going to be good. And so far, I will say it delivered. So yesterday was the premiere and we got the first two episodes. And then after that, we're just going to get one episode a week for a total of 10 episodes, each an hour long. And I've got to say that I've gotten pretty used to just being spoiled and getting all the episodes at once. And I can really tell just with this show, it's going to be a pain to wait each week for the next episode. But as of now, you could catch the first two episodes. They're on Hulu and FX. And before I get into it, this will be a spoiler-free video. I will not discuss any spoilers. So in case you've never read the novel Shogun, or if you've never seen the 1980 television series, the story for this new adaptation so far seems to be the same, and it takes place in 1600s Japan. This is at the tail end of the Izuchi Momoyama period. This is just before the chaos that would eventually bring forth the Edo period and the Tokugawa Shogunate. And just by watching this show, you could tell that this is a very chaotic time in history. So the show opens up with a shipwrecked European ship that's arriving at a Japanese fishing village. We meet one of the main characters, which is John Blackdorn, and he's played by Cosmo Jervis, and he's the ship's navigator. And he's captured by the Japanese, and he's summoned by Lord Yoshi Turanaga. And I didn't realize this at first, but he's the real protagonist of this show. And he's played by the great actor Hiroyuki Sanada. We've seen him in countless movies. In fact, he was in John Wick 4. He was also in Twilight Samurai. So many great ones. But in the 1980 series, Toranaga was played by Toshiro Mifune. And those are some big shoes to live up to. And Toranaga is really a fictionalized version of Tokugawa Ieyasu. And Turanaga is just a really cunning character. He summons Blackthorn really just to learn information that could help him get the upper hand against his enemies. And during this time period, the Portuguese have really just established trade and they brought Catholicism to Japan. And Blackthorn and his men, who were British, they're trying to discover the secret Portuguese naval routes and this is to disrupt their trade and their foothold. And it's just fascinating because we're watching these two characters, Blackdorn and Turanaga, just do whatever they can to survive. And just all these odds are against them. And Blackdorn just wants to form this alliance with Turanaga. But Blackdorn doesn't really realize that Turanaga is in a dangerous situation himself. And all while this is going on, their communication really relies on one character. Toda Mariko, who's played by Anna Sawai. And she's really just a pivotal character in this story. And she's a Christian noblewoman who's pretty reluctant to help Blackthorn. And this is because he's a Protestant. And her teachers are Jesuits. So it just creates this really interesting scenario. And also it's just worth mentioning that most of this show is subtitled. So, the few people who have a problem with that, I'll say 75% of the show is subtitled. 
And the subtitles are for the Japanese, while the Portuguese that's spoken is just in English. And this is definitely opposite from the 1980 version. If you've seen that, there's no subtitles. And that original version did something pretty clever. It forced the audience to feel like the main protagonists. Trapped in this world where people speak a different language. And just like with the main character, the audience is also kind of forced to learn Japanese. But it was weird because sometimes you really wouldn't know what they were saying in Japanese. It wouldn't tell you. And then other speeches that are in Japanese would just be dubbed in English by Orson Welles. So I don't think that was the best creative choice. But this time, luckily, they were just not afraid to have it subtitled. And that's kind of shocking to see in a pretty mainstream cable show. And like I said, majority of this is in Japanese. It really just feels like you're watching a Japanese movie. But it seems like they're just getting with the times. You're seeing this more with Netflix and Hulu shows. And I just gotta say that this show's production value is pretty incredible. I mean, the visual effects are on the level of an actual feature film. Something you would see in the movies, like an actual film. We're no longer in the age where television is less than movies. And this must have just costed a fortune to make, you could just tell. I'm sure this is a big gamble, so hopefully it pays off. And just a great example of this is right in the beginning when the ship is hit by a storm. It actually looks good, it doesn't just look like CGI. And also just the sets and the costumes, they're just so well made. You feel like you're in this time period. And it's just obvious that a lot of work went into just researching the history. And they successfully just created this world from the past. And the action in the show is done pretty well too. It's even choreographed really well, some of the fights that you see. Especially the second episode's finale, that definitely left me wanting more. And I don't speak Japanese, but according to what I've read about the show, the writing really pays special attention to the period-specific phrases that they use at the time. And so far, I'm just really loving the show's writing. It's done really well. At least for these first two episodes, we'll see. And I have read the novel, and I have seen the 1980 series, so I pretty much know where it's gonna go, but still I was entertained watching this. And I like too how this one focuses more on the other characters besides Blackthorn. Like I mentioned in my review, the 1980 series just focused on Blackthorn and not really anyone else. This time, they seem to be focusing more on Turanaga, so that's interesting. And I also like how there's big name actors in this. And I think Jarvis just does a great job at playing Blackthorn. But I will say, he is outperformed by the Japanese cast. And in particular, like I mentioned, Hiroyuki Sanada. Just a massive star in Japan, one of the greatest Japanese actors of all time. And he's really just outstanding as Taranaga. But unfortunately, he has to be compared to Toshiro Mifune. And Mifune's version was different. He was more stern, and you weren't really sure if you could trust him or not. But Sonata's version is definitely more of a likable character. Right away, you just feel like you want to be on his side. And I'm not saying that one person's performance is better than the other, they're just different. And if you read the novel, you would know that none of the characters are really good. Pretty much everyone's just looking out for themselves and trying to survive. So this is a different take on that, but it is interesting. Also another standout is Tadanobu Asano, and he plays Yabu Shige. And I just really find this actor to be really enjoyable to watch. He usually plays these kind of sick, sadistic characters. He just did such an excellent job as Kakihara in Ichi the Killer. And he's just one of my favorite Japanese actors. But I always felt like he was never used enough. 
But maybe that's just a testament to how he's such a great actor and you can never get enough of him. So hopefully they keep him in majority of the show. But I will say the only character I don't really like so far is unfortunately Mariko. And that's a shame because she really is a big pivotal character in this story. And it just seems like she's missing that charm and cheerful nature that she had in the 1980 version. But here, she just comes across, at least so far, as just being condescending. So, hopefully she changes over time and becomes more likable. So, you know, we're still in episode 2, so we'll see. So anyway, after the first two episodes, I gotta say, I am hooked. And I'm very impressed. And I'm just really excited to see where the show goes. I'm hoping it stays this good. But what I want the most out of the show is just for it to reach more people. I want it to make people interested in the samurai movie genre. Because it really is just underappreciated. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the premiere. And like always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.